My new book is called Taking a Risk, and it's a memoir of my last 50 years, mostly of travel, although the opening paragraph, I was three years old, so I suppose it's 79 years of travel. I wrote it last year, and it was enormously helped by the fact that my parents had returned all the letters that I wrote to them when I was traveling. So um, I kept them and I could review what I'd written, what had happened, and that made an enormous difference in that I could keep the vividness of what it was like traveling in those days. And also, actually, it became quite accurate, I think, because uh, I wasn't relying on memory. And uh, it was just enormous fun recalling it. I was in touch with my former husband, George, and every now and then we argued about something that happened, but I had proof in the letters, so um, that, that was all right. I have also talked about some of the media disasters I had. I'm, I'm quite disaster prone, so tour leading produced quite a lot of stories, as it would after 15 years of taking people around South America and Madagascar. I've had a few interesting media experiences, like um, trying to show how to use a condom in the jungle for BBC Two for a stupid programme called Trade Secrets. Stanford's has uh, played an enormous part in my publishing life. I mean, it really has, because when we were first wanted to publish our own guide. We had no money. We, we came back from Africa with, I think, 680 pounds, which wasn't enough to publish the two books that, that we wanted to publish. And George, my husband, went to work for a printer. Um, he'd never printed anything before, knew nothing about it, but he was sort of apprenticed to, to this printer um, in return for his, his, his labour, and he got the books, he got no pay, um, but he worked for the printer and he got two rather badly printed books, which he printed himself. And um, so we had the books, or we had the plates ready for the books, and he went to Stanford's and said that we we're doing this book. And actually, I think it was, it was our little yellow book, it was the very first book. And whoever was the buyer at Stanford's was enormously encouraging and nice. But they said, what's the ISBN? We said, ISBN? What's an ISBN? So an ISBN was explained and we went to a lot of um, difficulty finding, getting uh, the information on getting an ISBN. And then the buyer said, well, what discount do you give? Discount? We're supposed to give a discount to a bookshop. You know, I've never heard such a thing. So uh, George very cannily said, well, um, the usual, oh, 35%. Yes, that's right. So, you know, we really, we were in a huge state of ignorance, but it worked. And so we got the two books out. But Stanford's were the first um, British shop to sell our very first book, The Little Yellow Book. And it was certainly the first to sell Backpass Packers Africa, which was the second book and the second edition of Peru and Bolivia. So we, we wouldn't have survived without Stanford's. And, and you supported our travel writing competition for over 25 years. So we're totally in love with you.